guys my name is Crystal and welcome to my YouTube channel welcome old subscribers welcome new if you like my videos please press the like button and please do subscribe Alexa what's the time please the time is 11.53 a.m. so in a few moments I'm going to be eating a nice chicken pasty heated up in the microwave um, it's raining outside. Max is wet from a, from a short walk. I didn't go across the field. There was men on there smoking and I just didn't want to walk past it. I'm a woman and like three men, you know, that are nearly almost across the path. I just didn't fancy it this morning. But Max had a walk. He's, he's had a walk. He is wet. And it isn't very nice weather out there, so I've come home into my flat. So the purpose of this video is to read a piece on the police. And this is from the Sun newspaper yesterday, Wednesday, November the 2nd, 2022. Page 15 of yesterday's Sun. Flasher, mugger, accused rapist and domestic abuser. All hired to be cops. So this is about people being employed to be police officers. Okay. Blunders and poor rulings in vetting. Slack forces allowed scores of unsuitable candidates to slip through the recruitment net to become cops. The watchdog's probe found cases of glaring blunders and questionable decisions, including case one, a would-be special constable who exposed himself to a woman seven times in a fortnight made it through a forces vetting. Cops rejected him three times in 13 years before finally agreeing to hire him after an appeal. Case two, a community support officer from a criminal family was allowed to transfer forces despite not declaring that he beat his partner beat his partner before he became a police PCSO police community service officer vetting officers agreed it would be harsh to turn him down case 3 one officer said he was accused of rape as a teenager and as a juvenile was cautioned for shoplifting no measures were put in place to monitor him to minimise risk. Another was investigated over a sexual assault at a club. Case 4. No attempt was made to check an applicant's claim that he was estranged from his gangland brother who was of interest in murder and kidnap probes. Also, no measures were put in place to reduce corruption risk. Case 5. One would-be cop had robbed an 80-year-old woman as a juvenile nearly 20 years before. Another, a former drink driver, was probed for racially aggravated criminal damage where the victim was an off-duty special constable. Case 6. Inspectors found that a chief constable had overruled his vetting unit to approve the transfer of an officer facing sexual assault allegations. The main reason for rubber stamping largely that it would make the force more diverse. And there's an alarming number of female cops alleged sexual harassment, police report yesterday. Number of dodgy recruits is in hundreds, if not the low thousands, says the inspector of constabulary. Muggers, flashers, suspected rapists and alleged domestic abusers passed vetting checks to join the police, a report reveals. Some new recruits were cleared despite having criminal records, large debts and close links to organised crime, the investigation discovered. Inspector of Constabulary, Matt Parr, said last night the number of dodgy cops recruited in the last three or four years could be in the low thousands in the rush to meet recruitment targets. A culture of misogyny was also exposed in all eight forces investigated by the 
His Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabulary and Fire and Ris Rescue Services, HMICFRS, Inspectors Probed 8 Forces, Cumbria, Devon and Cornwall, Dorset, Kent, that's where I live, the Met, Nottinghamshire, South Wales Police and the Civil Nuclear Constabulary. The probe was ordered by ex-Home Secretary Priti Patel after the murder of Sarah Everard by serving Met Cop Wayne Cousins. Of the 725 police vetting files reviewed, the watchdog found 131 cases where new recruits were cleared to begin duties where the decision was questionable at best. Its inspectors were unimpressed by forces decision making it almost a fifth of 264 police complaints and misconduct probes. An online survey of 11,000 cops and support staff also revealed that an alarming number of women made ag allegations against male colleagues. These included sexual harassment and sexual assault. Porn, porn was often sent to female officers' phones. Mr Parr said it's too easy for the wrong people to both join and stay in the police. If the police are to rebuild public trust and protect their female officers and staff, vetting must much be much more rigorous and sexual misconduct taken more seriously. We found evidence of poor decision making in police vetting, inconsistent handling of misconduct cases and a lack of effective monitoring monitoring of officers. IT use. Yet despite repeated warnings, including several from us, not enough has been done to improve standards and stamp out misogyny and predatory behaviour in policing. The police must do more to prevent unsuitable people from joining in the first place, identify any misconduct within the force and quickly dismiss officers and staff if they are not fit to serve the public. Given the risks involved with recruiting officers at the scale and speed required by the Uplift programme, it's essential police leaders act now on our recommendations. The watchdog called for 43 changes, including tougher pre-employment checks and better intelligence gathering over corruption. College of Policing Chief Constable Andy Marsh vowed to put the recommendations into practice. He said thorough and effective vetting was key to it ass assessing the integrity of officers and staff, adding it allows us to be as sure as possible that we have the right people working for the right for the service. Tom Wells at the sun.co.uk Cousin Spark Probe by Tom Wells Murdering cop Wayne Cousins was the spark for the probe into police forces. The fiend was sentenced to a whole life term for the kidnap, rape and murder of Sarah Everard. Diplomatic protection cop Cousins, 48, of Deal, Kent, abducted Sarah, 33, in Clapham, South London, in March last year. He got her into his hired car by showing his warrant card and falsely arresting her for breaking COVID rules. And there he is. And don't tell me about police corruption because I know. I know full well. And especially, let's not forget people who are friends with police officers. Friends of police officers that can have access to a police car and a police uniform and police equipment. Let's not, let's not forget that, that friends of police, right? So a friend of, of a policeman can be corrupt and a policeman can help their friend um, blame it all on a victim. Or this allows an abuser to carry on attacking a victim when they should be in prison. I'm going to get off now. See you later.